But without further ado, I think it's time we get silly with these canines and we're going to dive into our low, our lone run for this evening, but it is a long one and it is a good one. It's going to be the, the dog Island. That's how I'm emphasizing it. Cause the and dog are capitalized the dog Island. And it's going to be the any percent category and it's run by phantom 5,800. How are you today? Phantom? Uh, I am doing it pretty well. I uh, went to the grocery store and just came back and I'm ready to kind of just dive into the dog Island. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it is all yours whenever you're ready to go. And I hope your grocery shopping went well as well. <laughs> well, there's actually a recent change. We changed how timing works. So don't be too alarmed that I'm starting. Don't start the timer just yet. We'll go with the new timing. Uh, we actually start timing after character creation is done now. Uh, the default before was everyone would just select the first breed in the list and name them all the same because it's faster, right? So giving people the option to play as one of the other 43 breeds in the game without losing time, I think was pretty unanimous in the voting. Oh yeah, you want to be able to showcase all these different pups. <laughs> and I was not exaggerating, there are 44 breeds. Each one has different variations. So I'm sure chat will have their favorite. Uh, something that you may notice immediately, uh, all of the dogs are wearing clothes. Uh, there is a very deep clothing customization system in this game also. So like, just going through the dogs here. I'm always going to pick the same one unless uh, Conception has an idea in mind. Oh my gosh, if, if I get the choice, if, if you're sure about it, I would love a pug if, you, if it's an option. Uh, how about this one? <laughs> oh my god, yes! Uh, we can I, uh, do this color scheme or we can do all black. Uh, I like the, the fawn one. That uh, that looks like I have a little pug at home. His name is Java because I'm a big Star Wars fan. And that looks like my little son. <laughs> all yes. right. So we're going to go with the boy dog. And I'm just going to go with single character name. The timing will start uh, when I select yes here. So I'm going to give a countdown. Three, two, one, go. Best of luck. So, the Dog Island is, for all intents and purposes, it's an RPG. There's a lot of text, there's a lot of story, there's combat that we'll get to later. Um, the story in particular is, there's a lot to talk about, but we'll get there as things come up. Uh, I will be skipping cutscenes because that would add a lot of time. <laughs> as much as possible. Uh, so this is our family. Oh. <laughs> we have our mom and our brother. Uh, brother is just the first option. Sister is also slower. There's more text. So we always go with the brother. Uh, our brother, as we'll find out very soon, is a little... He's sick. So we need to get milk for him. Um, you may also notice that there's no father figure uh, because dad is missing. And I'm sitting very far away from my TV because this is entirely pointer controlled. So, yes, that is what I was hoping you would say when it, when this was a Wii run. I was hoping it, it was entirely based off of the Wii remote. Yes, uh, Wii remote, no nunchuck. Uh, you point at the screen and hold B to run. Uh, and we will we're going to learn about how to dig and a little bit about snipping right now. This is like the initial tutorial. So this is the milkman. He lost his basket full of all the milk bottles that he was supposed to deliver to everyone in town. And we need to find it for him. So. Mashing through tutorials here. One very important thing. This will come up a lot. This is a also kind of a collectathon. <laughs> yes. Uh, there we go. So we need to smell 100 different things in order to be able to complete the game. And 75 of those things are routed in. The other 25 are RNG. Because what's an RPG without RNG? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if you ever see me like reaching forward with my left hand, it's because I'm just incrementing a counter. Uh, it's just 
very hard to keep track of 25 RNG pickups without some kind of assistance. So we got yeah, a bottle geez, of milk <laughs> for our brother. So many, so many things to keep track of. Yeah. Uh, this is the mailman. Uh, he's going to teach us how to save. You save by talking to the mailman. Uh, also, I will point out now that we're not currently on the Dog Island. Uh, this is a town, this is like a major port city called Pororo Town. Uh, we're going to get to the Dog Island later, but right now this is our hometown. And we got the milk for our brother. Mission success. Uh, there's a festival tonight, and we're going to go hang out with our friends. And our brother has to stay home because he's sick. Oh. When I picked uh, the pug, I did not know there was going to be a family involved as well, but I am very <laughs> pleased. Yeah, there's a... Well, we'll meet the other dogs later, but the there's so many, so many different stories that we can describe, we can talk about as we get to the different characters. Uh, this is just a festival. It's more collective on tutorial stuff. We're supposed to find three seashells uh, to win the festival minigame event. Uh, our brother snuck out of the house. That's not good. Uh, so we're a little mad at him for sneaking out while he's sick. And we compromise and say that as long as he stays right there at the edge of our driveway, he can hang out. As long as he doesn't do anything else. So he's just going to sit down in the road. Be a good boy. So we're going to grab three seashells, always in the same spots. Uh, we are able to sniff, which you may have seen me do earlier. Sniffing it helps us like kind of track where scents are, but it's faster to just know where they are. Uh, you'll notice that wasn't a shell, that was a piece of glass. It's just very convenient to pick that up now. Uh, so I've smelled, what is it? I've smelled bucket or a basket, I've smelled milk, I've smelled seashells, a glass, and a rock so far. All of those are routed in, so I'm not keeping track of those separately. Uh, during the festival, our brother got really sick, uh, so he's effectively bedridden. Uh, the doctor in town can't help us. Like, he doesn't know what to do. But supposedly there's another doctor on the Dog Island, who is potentially the best doctor in the world for all we know, and he is who is going to help us. But how do we get there? Well, we have a boat. You see the, the dog that has the, the pirate hat, he has a boat. And he's gonna take us- Shocker. <laughs> he's gonna take us over to the Dog Island. Three arduous days on this pirate ship. Chat rightfully pointing out that it should be dog tour instead of doctor. Ooh, good one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there. I'm sure chat's gonna have its dog puns in this almost three hour run. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Oh yeah. Uh, so since we're effectively, we're gonna be part of the crew for these next three days on the boat, and for the first day, we need to swap the deck. So they teach us the smell of dirt so that we can find all the patches of dirt on the ship and clean it up. Not very much, there's only three. Uh, you may notice that I'm shaking the Wii Remote every time I have to dig. This is a constant. And if you're familiar with how games on the Wii were back in the day, it sometimes doesn't work as you want. But it's not actually based on the chip inside the Wii Remote, it's based on the pointer on the screen. So if you're just moving the pointer on the screen, that's what counts as digging. I don't know why they didn't use the accelerometer, but whatever. Uh, we're going to learn about fishing now. Fishing is... Uh, I said picking up extra sense was RNG. Fishing is the biggest RNG in the game. <laughs> <laughs> By far. There are three times we have to fish. Uh, I calculated the odds a few months ago. Perfect fishing on the boat here is about 33% of the time you'll get it. 
maybe about 34. Uh, there's a point later in the game where perfect fishing is 13% of the time. So, world record runs kind of need that RNG. Uh, we need to get two fish. We need to get a sea bass and a Pacific Sauri. And the sea bass does look very similar to the Animal Crossing sprite. <laughs> Maybe a slightly different shade of green. Uh, I will also point out the developer for this game is a studio called Ukes. If you've heard of their name, you probably not from this game. Uh, from the Super Nintendo through the modern generation, the Dog Island is a standout in that it is a one-of-a-kind entry in their lineup of software. Every other game they've ever made... <laughs> I just looked at it. <laughs> uh, is wrestling licensed games from WWE, SmackDown vs. Raw, to AEW. So. And truly so many. Like, it's not just a few. It's like from 1995 to today, almost entirely wrestling games, maybe one a year or multiple a year. Wild. Yes. <laughs> there are all Absolutely lots. wild. Yeah. I don't know why they made this game, but I'm <laughs> glad they did. Uh, also, I will say that this game, as far as we are aware, has zero glitches. Uh, so, so it's perfectly made is what you're saying. We have not been able to find anything that would even remotely save time as far as glitches are concerned. Uh, the third day is just cleaning the deck again, and then we're going to skip some cutscenes. The A storm kind of just destroys the boat, and we wash up on shore somewhere. We are shipwrecked. And we have been staying in... We've been getting taken care of by Amalia here. She's been caring for us ever since we washed on shore some days ago. Uh, and she's just kind of telling us, oh, what? It, you're on the dog island now. Like, oh, cool. <laughs> That's convenient. So we tell her about we need a doctor. Uh, and she's going to go introduce us to the doctor of the town. And this is uh, the main town on the dog island here. This is Pupsville. Very ap is. aptly named. Mm-hmm. We're going to have other very good area names as we get to them. Uh, this is Dr. Potan. You can tell he's a doctor because he has glasses and the little like metal disc thing. He also has a tie. What is that metal disc thing for? Anyone know? I don't know what that is. I have no idea. It is, it is classic doctor attire, but I don't know what it accomplishes. Yeah. I'm sure someone in chat knows. Yeah. Chat will let us know for sure. The uh, dog tour of Pubsville, yes, correct. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Potan says he'll help us later, uh, but for now, we need to get a house. And this is Noble. He owns 99% of the real estate on the dog island. Uh, and he is going to rent us a home. Uh, on one condition, it's haunted. And we need to cleanse it of the evil spirit that is haunting his rental property. So, no big deal. We'll do that real quick. Through the power of digging and sniffing. Also very convenient that it's just two feet away from his house. Chat does come in and say that it is a, a light slash reflect reflector of light so that doctors can see a little easier if need Interesting. be. Interesting. Interesting. That makes sense. I learned. Actually. Today I learned. <laughs> Today I learned. Thanks, chat. Uh, so this is Potassi. He is what is called an Ankh. Uh, they're effectively fairies. Like, if you think of, like, a Zelda game, this is Navi. <laughs> he mm. is going to be with us for the entire game, basically giving us, like, little directions as to what we're supposed to be doing. 
uh, telling us, hey, did you remember to go do this thing? And then we'll say yes. Uh, he's also going to... He has a quest for us of his own. Uh, we're going to see it in like 20, 30 seconds. But it is effectively the main quest. And just tell Noble real quick, hey, we did the thing. Your evil spirit problem is solved. And we have the, uh, the rental house now. So we're going to go, we're going to leave Noble's house. We're going to go to the center of town. There was a big, like, grass patch outside of uh, the doctor's office. And we're going to plant a tree. But not just any tree. It's an onk tree. Ooh. Uh, and what the onk tree does is it grows through the power of friendship. So the more friends we make, the taller this tree will grow. And that's the main quest. We need to get that tree to its max size, basically. But so you, you could say the growth of the tree is the friends we make along the way. You could say that exactly. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm on board. So Dr. Potan, he wants us in order to make medicine for our brother. He needs us to go collect some stuff. But first he says, hey, you're new here. You don't actually know how to sniff. You need to go find a sniff master who will teach you. And we leave town. This is Yi Lu. He's not actually a sniff master, but he's kind of our first mentor along the way. We'll have two more later on, but he is the one that will teach us the basics of sniffing, digging, and combat. And we're going to get into combat now. This is a bear. Uh... When bears are mad, they hurt you. And that's the health tutorial. Kind of interesting that we had to go down to say, yes, we understand, but menu choices. There's little chickens. These chickens kind of tend to get in the way, but it's fine. So Yi Lu wants us to collect these ring fragments. There's four of them in total. We're going to get two of them right now for him. And we'll get the other two later as uh, we progress in the other storylines. He's now going to teach us how to fight back against bears and other animals. So when the bear is happy, this is when the bear is mad or agitated. But if an enemy is happy like this, you can bark at them and they get stunned. And if I... It's the minus button, by the way. If I hold the minus button, I can howl. Uh, I will never do that because there's never really a reason to howl. Barking is good enough. Plus, it's the minus button. Who wants to use that? <laughs> yeah, I'm... We use all of the buttons on the Wii Remote, actually. <laughs> Not... Well, you can use one and two, but it's really awkward. Yeah. Uh, if you want to automatically center the camera, it is mapped to the one or the two button, but my hands do not really let me do that. So the D-pad controls the camera. I match the A button, I hold the B button, basically all the time. And the minus button for arcing. <laughs> uh, on PS2, I will make this comparison now, this is a good time. On PS2, you mash the X button to run. Oh, no, you mash the circle button to run. And the X button is interact. Uh, I don't know why they made it mash, mm. but it makes PS2 very hard to control. That is a not good idea, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to mash too fast, but it is enough to be like kind of annoying. Uh, so Dr. Potan, we told him that we learned how to sniff, and he wants us to go get a yellow flower for him. Uh, he, it's kind of this is supposed to teach you how to find scents by like triangulating their position from other scents that are nearby. That's uh, not very important because we just know where stuff is. <laughs> uh, also, I, while you're digging, you can continue to sniff for nearby scents because all of the key items we want are a like a blue scent meter on the bottom left, 
or in the middle. The orange scent meter is an RNG spawn if it shows up. So for every, almost every time I pick up a key item, I'm sniffing for to see if there's another orange item nearby that I can just eat quickly grab, as opposed to having to search for them later. And the second thing that Dr. Potan needs, he says this is his assistant. Uh, he knows where the next flower that we need is. Uh, so this is Francis. She is the nurse who is also afraid of blood. And because she's afraid of blood, the local gang throws tomatoes at her because they think it's funny. Uh, we're going to find out more about why she's afraid of blood later, but... It's, uh, her backstory <laughs> is probably, honestly, hers and Dr. Potan's are probably the most dramatic. But these dogs have very, very deep lore. So we need to go grab a fruit for Francis, that when she eats it, she will become brave. It's called a brave fruit. Classic. <laughs> Uh, luckily, all of these things are basically just right over here. Uh, I don't know where that scent is, I'm not going to bother. While we do need 25 extra scents that are not part of the route, the route, it, we're pretty lenient with like when we can pick them up. It takes a long time for us to really need to be concerned with having it or not having it. Uh, Green Meadows in particular, which is where we're running back and forth from, the scents are pretty spread out, so and it's RNG spawns. We don't we don't go to too many of the same places, so it's not very often worth checking a lot of those spots. However, we're gonna go to another area now called Treely Woods. The scent spawns in Treely Woods are a lot more dense, so while it is still RNG if it spawns at all, uh, we can check every time we pass through. And eventually, it will be there. And that's usually good enough. There's a couple, because the spots that we go to are very in the way. And if it shows up immediately, I can kind of show why. The so Treely Woods is just on the other side of here of Green Meadows. If we're lucky, there's a spawn like right here. Not lucky. Hmm, <laughs> too bad. We did get lucky here. And there is a sunflower just right across the bridge. Uh, this is Goliath. So the item we need is past this path a little bit further down, but there's a tree in the way. Uh, Goliath, if he had a functional axe, would just break the tree in half and get it out of the way for us. Uh, so we need to fix his axe. And the axe handle that he needs is being held by a gorilla. Uh, this is a sort of just a safety strat. I kind of waste time by picking up sense over here because gorillas are very, they get very agitated unless they're asleep. So when he's asleep, I bark at him, just steal the axe handle and leave. There's something just inherently funny about a gorilla getting even remotely startled by a pug. <laughs> Just like a little bark. And like, oh, Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of animals like that where we'll... Like bears, gorillas. <laughs> we'll bark at them. <laughs> they will be startled. They will drop an item and we will leave. Uh, so the Ooh. item we need over here is a blue flower. Ignore the fact it is purple. It is called a blue flower. We're going to bring that back to Dr. Potan. And kind of just end day one. You may notice that there is a like a day-night cycle. It is The day-night cycle is on a timer, just like in Zelda. So it's not like this is actually, oh, we're ending the day because it's like nighttime. No, this is just because we're moving fast enough that we hit the cycle and it happens to be nighttime. There's a few times where we're, 
we're we're told to go to bed and it's very bright outside. It's probably noon in the game world. So two flowers. We need one more for Dr. Potan later, but uh, it's the end of the day as far as he can, he's concerned, so time for us to go home. Uh, uh, Potassi, so in <laughs> oh, go for go it. No, no, please finish. Okay. Uh, Potassi just says that something he feels something coming and he doesn't know what. And this, we're just going to talk to the mailman real quick. Mailman's going to say, hey, uh, sometimes you get mail from your family and you can read it here. And we're not going to. Anyway. Oh, oh brutal. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> uh, someone in chat was asking, um, since this is, a, this is a, a game that was made by a Japanese developer, is it a Japanese only game or is it just uh, you have a Japanese coffee for the sake of speed? Oh no! It, I run on Japanese because of speed. That is all it is. Okay. Uh, Got it. The English copies are actually really cheap. Uh, I think I paid a dollar for mine. Whoa! Hey, look at that. Uh, so Potassi has a stomach ache, and unfortunately, we're the only one that can see him, and we don't know how to help him. So we go to this dog that lives under a book. His name is Alex. He lives under a book. He's probably smart. Um, and Alex doesn't know anything about onks because they're a mythical creature. So why would he? But luckily, he says that there's a witch that lives in the forest and she probably knows something. And since it's day two, there's now a shortcut to Treely Woods just over here. Uh, the only reason we couldn't use it a few minutes ago was because there was a dog saying that the path is blocked. And over here is the house of Obaba, the witch. And we're very lucky we got the pumpkin spawn. That's a 50-50 every time we reload this room. So this is Obaba. She can help Potassi as long as she's able to see him. Currently she cannot. So we need to get her something that will allow her to see. And what she says will help is if we go back to where we found Potassi, which is our fireplace, uh, grab a pile of ashes from the fireplace so that she can rub them in her eyes. <laughs> um, would not suggest doing this at home. But whatever you Obama wants. Keeps, you just keep saying stuff, and I'm like, why? <laughs> why is it <laughs> happening this way? Yeah. <laughs> so we got some ashes. This is actually a really interesting spot. So most of the time when we pick up items, we get a little text box. But in that particular, in that exact spot, we position ourselves such that uh, when we pick up the ashes, we're close to the bed. And when you're close to the bed, the text box for do you want to rest overwrites the text box for you got the item. So we just never get the little pop-up. So... Obaba rubs the ashes in her eyes. She can now see Potassi, and now she can uh, cure his stomach ache by howling at the moon. And now he feels much better. Uh, she kind of gives us a hint here that, hey, someone in town is looking for you. So that's... Uh, a lot of dogs, actually, when you finish a quest for them, they'll hint like, hey... Uh, go back to this town and someone has a quest for you. Just to kind of... So you're not wandering around aimlessly, I guess. There is also a map system. To, you can open up a world map and sniff at different parts of the map to see if there are quests available. So Francis is a little concerned. Dr. Potan sometimes just leaves his office and she doesn't know where he goes. So she wants us to follow him. I don't know why she's so concerned about him leaving his office, but <laughs> we're going to stalk Dr. Potan. Uh, he's just going along this path, basically. All the way through Treely Woods. So we get four little cutscenes of seeing like kind of where he's going. So even though we have the shortcut to Treely Woods, you actually do have to go through Green Meadows here. Do we get lucky? Not lucky. 
Eventually, the orange will spawn there, I swear. We passed by this area like 10 times. So Dr. Potan went all the way down this path to the next area. Um, brace yourselves. This is Zumi Lake. So, like I said, we had good names for locations. This is Zumi Lake. Zumi Village is on the other side. We'll be going there later. This is where we kind of learn how to swim. And by kind of, I mean we just jump in the water and move the exact same way we normally would. Zoomy Lake. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, so this is Dr. Potan. As you see, he's at a gravestone. He is grieving the loss of one of his former patients who passed away when he gave them medicine that didn't work. What? <laughs> um, what? That's so dark. <laughs> so now we're back in Pupsville. And Francis said that Yi Lu was looking for us. Anyway. I'm traumatized. <laughs> uh, we're just going to keep doing quests for Dr. Potan. As if nothing happened. Uh, Yi Lu is going, to do, is going to teach us about a specific type of scent. Called, like, I think it's a scent trail. Is what they call it in English. These scents are... For a lack of a better word, I think so the fact that it, you're supposed to follow a trail to get to them doesn't really matter because we know where they spawn. But these particular kinds of scents are incredibly precise. Uh, most scents that we pick up, we can be like within a dog's length of them and find them perfectly easily. Like I could have dug anywhere around these flowers to pick up that orange. But for these scent trails, they are nearly pixel perfect. Like, as pixel perfect as you can be with moving by pointing at the screen with a Wii Remote. And we used to have a quest that required picking up one of these scents on ice. And thankfully that is no longer part of the route. As you can imagine, doing something at pixel perfect on ice when you're sliding around is not a good time. And it would it would have killed runs in the past. Shoutouts to Remy. She found a different quest we can do that accomplishes the same thing. Uh, so we can't jump across this gap because it is too large for our tiny dog body to make but we see that there's a hippo there. So what if we were able to persuade the hippo to move over into a spot where we could jump across its back? And we do that with food. This hippo really loves spinach. So we're going to put some spinach on the stump and he's going to move over. For the sake of demonstration, this is the one cutscene I will not skip because I love this cutscene. Okay. And <laughs> It's not even that long, but look at him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what a little cutie. <laughs> uh, now he will sleep there for all eternity. And we can use him to jump across this gap. And this scent, first try, Actually, that's really good. Most people uh, struggle to pick up that scent in a couple tries. But I have a... There's a visual cue for a little white flower, kind of in the middle of the other flowers. If your dog's head is just a little bit past that, it should work. And I picked up a watermelon on the way back down, just because I noticed it was nearby when picking up the uh, ring fragment. We're at, currently at six extra cents, by the way. We need 25 in total, but we've still got a ways to go. So this is the ring fragment. We're bringing it back to 
Yilu. And he's going to tell us that something is weird. It seems like there's some kind of like weird scent coming out of Pupsville, and he doesn't know what it is. But he also never steps foot inside Pupsville, so... I don't know why. I don't remember, honestly. I haven't played this game in English in a long time. But... We noticed that no one's outside. And the smell that we smell is the scent of sick dogs. Everyone in town is sick. Everyone. While we were off at Zumi Lake, uh, some sort of epidemic struck the village and literally everyone is sick. And Dr. Potan is overwhelmed. He can't, hear, he can't care for everyone at the same time. He is the only doctor. Uh, so we need to go grab medicine that he says will help all of the dogs. Apparently this dog isn't sick, though. <laughs> that one's just, fine, yeah. Yeah, just the one. Good immune system. Ah, uh, really? So, in English, this is called uh, D-Flungi, or D-Flu NGI, like anti-flu something. Uh, in Japanese, I think it's called, like, the equivalent translation is, like, Potan's fake medicine or something. <laughs> uh, and Obaba tells us that, hey, that won't help anyone. <laughs> oh, we need to go back to Potan and we say, hey, the thing that you told us to get actually isn't a cure for this disease. And we're going to get a cutscene here. Effectively during this cutscene, we know we see the Dr. Potan gets sick as well. Obaba comes in, uses magic and saves everyone. I wish I could skip that before the little dog whimper, but nothing I can do. I mash plus and it just doesn't skip fast enough. Sometimes it can be a little sus, a little sus of uh, the dog, <laughs> the dog towards uh, judgment here. Just for yeah. the record. Yeah. So we have one more item, one more flower to get for Dr. Potan. And it's a white flower. So we're going to take the yellow flower, the blue flower and the white flower, grind them up into dust, give them to our brother and he's going to be all better. So the white flower is just over here next to this bear. This sign actually has a really big hitbox. I've run into it before a few times. It doesn't look like it, but it's actually like a big cube. So this is sort of like the... I don't want to phrase this. This is like a sort of like a story reset point almost coming up here. We're going to take this medicine back home. And when we get back to the Dog Island, it's going to be kind of like a recap moment. <laughs> so if there's any time to take a break, it'll be when we come back from the village. Okay, so we're gonna, that's good to know. Yeah, we're going to go home real quick and get a couple cutscenes. And then when we come back, I think we'll take a short break. All right, so, sounds good. If you want to just count us down when that time is, and then we'll pause the timer for you. Perfect. So this, we're bringing Dr. Potan to our mom and brother. He's going to use this flour mixture that he has made and just uh, solve all of our problems. Uh, I think. <laughs> of course, this is what, 40 minutes into it, almost three hour run. So clearly this isn't the end of it. But Dr. Potan's medicine didn't work. I couldn't see this coming. Potan? Uh, <laughs> mm. But he says that there is uh, something else we can do. There's a legendary flower that hasn't been seen by a living creature for millennia. And it's on the dog island. If we get that flower and bring it to our brother, that'll cure him. 
So in order to do that, what we're, we're going to need to go through a big training arc. We're going to need to become a sniff master. Uh, and do a few interesting points. Do a few interesting quests. We're gonna we're gonna power up a little bit. Uh, we're just telling our friends here what happens uh, when I go back in into our house. I'll give a countdown before that, but that'll be a good time to take a break. So we're telling Alex That's and good. Amalia like, "Hey, we need to find the legendary flower. Have you guys heard of it?" And they're like, "Uh, in books, yeah, sure, in like fairy tales." And maybe if you talk to a Baba tomorrow, she can help. Which sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, we noticed that the onk tree here has actually started to grow already. It's no longer a little leaf. It's a couple leaves. And I'll give a three, two, one. It's a good time to take a break. Okay, awesome. Yes. So now we are getting into... I guess what we'll call Act 2 of the Dog Island. Uh, but for right now, we are going to use this as an opportunity to get a little break, maybe take your dog outside for a quick walk, get us some snack, drink some water or milk out of a bowl. And we will be back in just a few moments uh, with some more Dog Island action. So we will see you then.
All right, welcome back everyone to Awfully Silly, the Silly Canines edition. If you are just tuning in, we are featuring a speed run of the Dog Island that's being put on by Phantom 5800. Just a couple of reminders before we jump right back into that run. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, go on over to twitch.tv slash games done quick if you're interested in learning and looking at our live content, which starts weeknights mainly at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. And also, your subs, gift subs, Prime Gaming subs, and bits do help support this weekly hotfix content. So if you like it and are interested in it, feel free to continue to support our daily content if you enjoyed these hotfix shows by doing those things that I mentioned. We really appreciate it. But for now, I, I just want to jump right back into the cuteness. Phantom, go ahead and take it away so we can get started with Act 2, quote-unquote, of the Dog Island. Sounds good. Three, two, one, go. So, basically, the start of this part of the game is just... It makes sense in the context of we took a break, but in normally in a speedrun where we don't take a break here, it's a recap of what happened in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> so this is a good opportunity to say, hey, well, we need to go talk to Obaba here. Tassie asks us in that introduction there, do we remember where Obaba's house is? Which, of course, we do. We were literally there a few minutes ago. But, Obaba's gonna tell us a bunch of just stuff that we need to do to find this legendary flower. And then Patassi's going to ask us questions about everything that Obaba just asked, or told us, rather. And, conveniently, the answer to every question is the second option. And even more convenient, when you're mashing A in those sort of dialogue boxes, when the option to select an answer comes up, even if you keep mashing A when that message box comes up, it will not take an input from the A button until you menu down with the D-pad. So, Whoa, okay, that's interesting. So I can just mash A through that entire time and then just press down when those dialog boxes come up. And now Yi Lu is going to give us our quest for the fourth ring fragment. Which, it's not too hard to find. He hid it himself in Treely Woods. Uh, whereas the first couple, one of them was stolen by a snake. Uh, one of them was off in Zumi Lake and one of them was literally like 10 feet away from him. Uh, but this last one, he buried it in Treely Woods. And it's in a pretty convenient location because there's a, another scent that is guaranteed to spawn there like two seconds away from it. So the item routing kind of just works out so we can go over here grab the item we need, and then grab another item kind of just for free. As a reminder, we need 100 total cents. <laughs> uh, so the item routing is pretty tight. There are a couple things that are guaranteed that we opt to not pick up usually because they're kind of out of the way. Very likely I will just grab them during this run depending on my scent count when I get there. If this was like a PB attempt, there's a few scents I would definitely be skipping, but for the sake of just guaranteeing that I have enough, I'll probably go out of my way to get a couple. So Yi Lu here, now that we have all four ring fragments, he tells us, hey, do you want to hear my life story? And we say no. Oof. <laughs> uh, it's about 15 seconds of dialogue if we listen to hit all, everything he has to say uh, I have in fact done that once by accident but basically Yilu's backstory he was a student of Master Road who we are going to go see now uh, he Master Road worked him to the point of exhaustion, and he kind of just couldn't take it anymore and left. So 
the ring, the apprentice ring that we just assembled is the sign that we are a student of Master Road. And yeah, <laughs> we're taking Yilu's spot as the student. Uh, another hippo here. Uh, something that I didn't say before, when I'm climbing up to check that stump there, I'm able to overlap the animation that the dog does where he shakes water off with interacting with the stump. So I can do both at the same time. Just a very small optimization. Ooh, we got lucky. <laughs> uh, there's a chance that the green apple here spawns directly under the sweet potato that the elephant wants, or that the hippo wants. I said elephant because we are going to see elephants later. Ooh. And they behave similarly to hippos. <laughs> Even better news. Uh, these crocodiles, by the way, I actually don't know if they're crocodiles or alligators. Uh, maybe someone from Florida could answer. But... <laughs> um, they... The, not these ones in particular, but the ones that we find later in the game do the most damage out of any enemy in the game. These ones do a heart and a half, but there's... Uh, crocodiles or alligators in the end game that do a full three hearts of damage if they hit you. Which you may notice we have three hearts. You know, I'm sure we don't plan on uh, raising that or will it raise naturally with progression or? It will eventually go up to seven. Okay. Uh, we do not get the full ten but it will go up to seven kind of just by playing the game. Uh, this is Master Road. He says that he buried a glass vase in the Hoya Plains, and we need to go find it. <laughs> that is his introduction to us. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we're gonna. This is actually a lot of stuff going on right now. We're gonna take this apple to move this elephant. <laughs> this actually doesn't need to happen right now. But doing it now is faster than doing it when we actually need it. Uh, so I'm actually going to take this a little slow because I don't like this particular boar. Uh, not lucky with the sense. I'm waiting for the boar to go to sleep, basically. There we go. Because he has a giraffe's note, is what that item is called. And the giraffe's note will allow us to interact with giraffes. And you'll see what they do in a second. Because there's a giraffe right here. We're going to jump down, talk to his butt, and get teleported to the front side. And what giraffes do is they are all positioned at these ledges so that when you talk to them, they will bring you to the higher ledge. By making you watch a cutscene that we skip. Even skipping the cutscene takes like a good 8 seconds or 8 to 10 seconds of just you have to talk to them, wait for the cutscene to trigger, skip the cutscene. So there are some giraffes later that we usually opt to skip interacting with. Okay, I got lucky. That flower doesn't always spawn, but it's a very kind of free position. Just grab something. This vase also is very precise. But we never miss. At least Jeez. I don't. <laughs> so we kind of did a lot there in Hoya Plains. Uh, when I jumped over the elephant, I grabbed a lotus flower, which I won't be using really anytime like in the next 10 minutes. But it is very important. So, now that Master Road has his vase back to go with his other collection of pottery, he tells us that we need to help dogs and become friends with people. And there's someone in town that can use our help. Someone in Zumi Village. And this is Boris. Uh, if you... On the off chance anyone has ever been to my stream, there's a Boris emote. Because Boris is a friend. 
Uh, he is effectively the UPS guy for the island. Except he has no sense of direction and he got lost. So we're doing his job for him. <laughs> we need to deliver oh, this fire nice. firewood to Noble. Boris has a maid right now. Yeah. Uh, he'll make it back to Pupsville pretty soon, but he doesn't quite know how to get back yet. But Noble really needs this firewood. Uh, this segment is also where, in like a marathon setting, I would usually pass it off to like, hey, we got like five minutes if you want to read donations. So mm -hmm. any, th any questions from chat, this is a pretty good time. Ooh, yeah, I love that uh, idea. We're going to be running back and forth a lot. As you see, we, we were just in Hoya Plains, and we're going to be running back and forth between Hoya Plains and Popsville a couple times. Just uh, doing a little quest for Boris. So we drop off the firewood with Noble, uh, meet back up with Boris, and Boris laments that he has no sense of direction. And it's really a shame <laughs> because it's kind of important that he doesn't get lost. So we're going to go over to Alex under the book in a second. And Alex is going to effectively give us a hint that, hey, uh, there's a magnetic rock that you can find in Hoya Plains and that we could fashion that into a compass. So we're going to make a compass for Boris. And this is a very good time for literally any kind of questions that anyone has. Someone someone did ask who is the best dog, but I feel like, do you think it's Boris or is it somebody else? Oh, it's definitely Boris. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll see why later, but he is... Uh, my split for the Boris quest is that Boris is my friend. So... Uh -huh. Uh, uh, what about a, the worst dog, man? Oh, uh, we will meet him actually pretty soon. His name is Curtis. Curtis. Okay. Um, he right. has a he has a quest that will cause us much pain, potentially. Uh, someone else did ask. We kind of alluded to it earlier when you mentioned there's not many glitches, but is this an exploit heavy run? Would you say? Um. There are a couple items that we can pick up without ever picking up the quest for them, which may, you may consider an exploit, but only a few, maybe like four or five that we can do, that we can kind of shortcut the quest that way. If there were more, that'd be really cool. <laughs> yeah, so few exploits, but probably not exploit heavy, we would say. Yeah. Considering yeah. all the items you have to pick up just to, uh, just to get through the run. Yeah. Honestly, being able to skip the scent barrier would be huge. But as far as we know, there's not currently a way to really do anything like that. Yeah, the 100 the 100 cents is that like the journey to the sniff master? Is that what we'd call that? Like yeah, effectively. 100 cents makes makes you the master now. Yeah, 100 cents is how you are able to please the final like teacher and get into the end game areas. Uh, the other category uh, for this is 100% sense, which as you can imagine is far more than just 100. Yes. <laughs> how many do you know how many are, are there off the top of your end? Uh I should because I made a website for tracking it, but <laughs> uh, I want to say there's like you need to catch every single fish and every single bug. So there's I want to say close to like 180 to 200 or something around there. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, maybe 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 double what you need to get in the run. Yeah. yeah. The regular 80% run. Uh somebody asked we we did touch on this earlier. It was this released in English as well. It sure was and it uh according to Phantom here, it's relatively inexpensive, so feel free to look for it. Yep. Um, and then somebody also asked, what made you choose this run or slash game in particular <laughs> as a speed run? Um, so I started running this game a, about a year ago uh, because I was bored with the other game I was running. Uh, 
I started actually, my first speed run was Super Mario 3D World. And I wanted to start running other stuff. And I saw that there was this on SRC and said, hey, that would be funny. And I just kind of <laughs> did it. And that, that's usually what happens with a, with somebody who runs an awful slash silly game. In my experience, it would the answer is usually, wouldn't that be funny if... Yep. <laughs> and then and then it happens. Um, yeah, what, somebody... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to side tangent. Just whatever question. <laughs> well, somebody, somebody mentioned, and this is a good segue into the larger realm of the lore. Uh, somebody said that this has the, the dog, parentheses, the game energy, because there's a game called The Dog. And it should uh, have that energy because they are in the same franchise. Uh, which the franchise is called The Dog. We were yep. talking about this before the stream started. So, all in the greater extended The Dog universe, or The Dog and Friends universe, <laughs> as it might be called. Yeah, so when I started running this game, the world record was a 239. Uh, I don't remember the seconds, but it's because of the timing changes, it's not really relevant anymore. The current record is a. 224.17, by the way. Well, I shaved off a good 15 minutes or so. Yeah. Wow. Um, I am taking intentional damage here for the sake of speed. Uh, this game has a very limited inventory size. And since we need to pick up 100 items, uh, that can kind of get in the way. Uh, very luckily, when you die, your inventory is cleared and you get teleported back to the load zone that you entered the area from. So you don't really lose anything other than your inventory. And this gorilla is very conveniently placed to be able to kill us. <laughs> Oof. Oh, a little game over screen. Poor, poor little guy. It's all right. It's just yeah. an exploit. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, we do that a couple times, but that is... Uh, the routing to take damage there is something that I came up with a couple months ago. Because uh, taking all the damage you need from just the gorilla, it takes a while sometimes. And he's very hard to like aggro enough to hit you multiple times. And some of his attacks are just really slow. So taking the intentional damage from the bear and then a snake and the boar on the way really optim I feel like optimizes that kind of death warp. Uh, so what we're doing right now, Amalia is pretty mad at the victory gang. Uh, the ones that are kind of terrorizing the town. And she said that it never used to be a problem when Bill was here. Well, uh, Bill is no longer the leader of the victory gang. And we just kind of went and grabbed his sort of emblem to sort of take his place. But as you can probably suspect, just having his emblem doesn't mean that we are their leader. Uh, we need to prove to all of them by completing their mini games that we are capable of leading them. The first mini game is hide and seek. Uh, this is also a game-long quest. So, uh, there are six mini-games in total we need to complete. We're going to do three of them pretty quickly here. Uh, this, by the way, this is Curtis. Uh-oh. <laughs> With his blue plaid hat and sunglasses. Yeah, those, look, those almost look like those, like, gunner shade gamer glasses for uh, yeah. blue light protection or whatever. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to do a quest for him very shortly. Uh, that in PB attempts will kill runs. For us, it might just take a couple minutes. <laughs> but it is the heaviest RNG in the game. All right, so we're looking for good RNG here. Okay. Yeah. So they said that uh, now that we've found them all, this is, we're going back to Boris, by the way. <laughs> this is why we love Boris. Shout out to Boris. 
Uh, we are now in Zumi Village. Yo, Boris Warps? Yeah. Oh, that is a good dog. So now that Boris has a compass, he's, a, he's able to teleport us anywhere in the world that we've already been. Which turns out is very useful. <laughs> when it takes five minutes to run from here to Pupsville. Uh, so the Victory Gang says that their princess is off in Hoya Plains for some reason. This is the princess. This is... Why can't I remember her name? Catherine? I want to say it's Catherine. It might not be. You could say anything right now and I'd believe you. <laughs> uh, but that's why we grabbed the lotus flower earlier. We placed it on the stump just next to her. And this removes the bees that are blocking the desert. <laughs> because the bees are blocking the path to the desert. Uh, Catherine is Noble's daughter. Uh, we'll never talk to her again, but we are going to steal something from her room. <laughs> this scent is actually really hard to pick up for... Oh, I'm a little bit too far. Because you can't sniff. Uh, we stole silver, by the way. The reason we can't like sniff to find its exact location is because if we press the A button to sniff, we will talk to Dougal. And Dougal will tell us everything there is to know about fish. And that takes like a minute. <laughs> oh my so, goodness. Because with Dougal there, you can give him one of every fish to complete your fish catalog. Um, and that unlocks you, I think, a clothing item, but not even 100% sense does that because you only need the scent. You don't need to give them to Dougal for completion. Unfortunately, we don't have a category that interacts at all with the clothing system. It's something that I've tried to like think of how you would do, but nothing that I've really thought of makes a whole lot of sense for a speedrun. Uh, so Alex here, he won't leave his book. He is too afraid to leave his book house. So he agrees that if we can solve his riddle, he will go outside. Uh, I don't remember the exact riddle, but he wants a candle. And to get a candle, we just go into the Victory Gang hideout and take one. Hmm, that seems like theft. That seems like some stealing. <laughs> um, he has a couple more riddles for us. Uh, these riddles count for quest completion, which is just really fast because we need to complete a certain amount of quests to beat the game to grow the Yonk Tree. So being able to just say, hey, Alex, let's talk for 20 seconds and get a quest off the list. Pretty convenient. Uh, so this first quest, this first riddle, uh, it's something about like an animal that like moves slowly. I don't remember. The answer is snail, which is the second option. If you're used to running, seeing games run in Japanese, you're like, yeah, just it's the second option. I don't know anything about what the text is, but it's the second one. Mm hmm. <laughs> That's the secret to speedrunning in a language that you don't read. Yep. Just pick me. You know, just know where to press the button. That's it. Yeah. So Francis is back to being bullied again. The effect of the brave fruit from a while ago is worn off, and she's telling us her backstory, why she's afraid of blood. Uh, when she was a young pup, she was playing with her friend. Uh, she did something that caused her friend to bleed profusely and she just ran away and she thinks her friend is dead and she thinks that she killed her so she wants us to go find her friend's grave um we're gonna see in a second that her friend isn't dead but that's why she's afraid of blood 
Uh, in Zumi Village here, we're going to have three quests. One of them is for Francis. Uh, the other two are for, well, these dogs. <laughs> uh, Clark is the first one here. He really likes bugs. Like, he really likes bugs. Okay. Uh, if you're familiar with, like, anime especially, this is a pretty common trope of, like, catching beetles. Like, kids catching beetles. Oh, I really want them. Okay. This is kind of the same idea. Uh, there's butterflies, there's beetles, there's ladybugs. He really wants something called a common butterfly. So we're going to go get one for him. And here's Curtis. You see, Curtis, he likes fishing. And he nah. really wants a black bass. We already know how to fish. We're going to do that. I already understand why, <laughs> why Curtis might be annoying, I think. Uh, the way that fishing works in this game, when you load the room, there are, it selects one of the random drop tables that has fish in it. And the black bass is on all of the drop tables. And on the best drop table, it has a 17% chance of spawning. The best. On the best, best you can drop, hope for. The best drop table. Every extra fish we get is an extra scent. It's slower than picking up scents elsewhere by about 10 seconds on average. But it does still count. There's the black bass, actually. Right. So we only got two extra fish, and neither of them are duplicates. I was going to say duplicates cost you about 25 seconds. So we got pretty good RNG there. Uh, yeah, the yeah, best how, case on are, average, how many do you have to get to get the black bass usually, do you think? Um, I would usually give up after three or four and just reset in a PB attempt. But I've had it take as long as 13. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and the butterfly we got there is for uh, Clark. It's guaranteed to spawn in that location every single time. There's no RNG to it whatsoever. We do only have to fish one other time in the game, and the last fishing spot is a 33% chance. Get what we want. Which isn't too bad, honestly. 33%, usually you get it within two, pretty common. And it's all the last fishing location is also after you've gotten your 100 cents. So you can actually fail the fishing minigame faster than it takes to complete it if you know that you're not going to get the right fish. Uh, so... Curtis and Clark give us their badges. And over here, this is Elaine. She kind of just popped in. But she is Francis's old childhood friend that is supposedly dead. So we're going to match through the text here. And as Francis learns that her friend is not dead. And I think maybe she somewhat gets over her fear of blood, but... Probably not, because that's still pretty traumatizing. <laughs> so. Just can't get over it. Why is there such a dark, weirdly dark themes in this game? Well, I mean, Ukes is known for their uh, WWE, SmackDown vs. Raw. <laughs> mm -hmm. Their world building. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so now that we've done that, we're going to go to a new area, actually. We cleared these bees earlier to the desert. And we're going to head off. We're going to head in there and see what the desert's all about. It's nighttime, so it, I feel like deserts at night are pretty cold. So maybe this isn't like the best time for this tutorial, but 
Uh, this is the heat exhaustion tutorial. It's not relevant to the run because we never spend that long here. But if you do spend too much time in the desert, you will eventually die of uh, heat. So I'm just going to pick up something here in the Oasis. I am a little short on sense from where I'd like to be, but that also means like stuff just hasn't spawned where I want it to. Uh, this is a romantic drop. I actually picked up a quest earlier in Noble's house from a dog called Peter who really wanted a romantic drop to give to Amalia to confess his love. So uh, we're doing that for him. Peter is Peter might actually be my second least favorite dog just because of how he's written. He spends a lot of time giving us quests to help him confess his love to Amalia. Uh, she doesn't like him and he just keeps doing it. Ooh, yeah, not a good... You got to take no on the first try, you know? Yeah. You got to move on. So... Uh, the branch that I just picked up there by that oasis, we actually don't have the quest for that. But it's always there. So... That branch is the ash branch for a dog called Jeremy, who we haven't even met yet. But he is going to... He's effectively a wizard. Uh, he has the power to control the weather. And... We just need to give him a new staff with which to do so. Uh, this is Mary Teresa. She is the furniture store in this town. And she wants us to deliver some furniture to Noble, which is pretty convenient. Uh, because we need to go to Noble's house anyway. So we drop off the furniture for Noble. And then we go on over here to Peter. Try not to mash A too much to talk to him again. <laughs> Give Peter the romantic drop, complete his quest. <clears throat> uh, I will say that this game also has dating. Uh, we don't interact with that part of the game because the, those quests are very late and usually require a lot of work to get to. Um, but as a boy dog, we are able to date Amalia, which kind of, yeah, makes Peter probably feel bad. Anyway, this is Jeremy. He is a wizard. Uh, he's kind of telling us that he wants us to find a stick for him, and then we say we've already found it. There is a little Don't bit just of custom. Say Custom dialogue just here. say he's a wizard, like, that's a normal thing to say. <laughs> like, he's a, he's a dog. Yeah, he's a wizard. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Clearly. That's fine. Uh, he is able to use magic to control the weather. So, uh, this will come into play later, and he's gonna, we're gonna have to help him imbue his magical staff with uh, the natural mana of the world. But that's not right now. That's at a future point. <clears throat> so, uh, go tell Mary Teresa that we dropped off the furniture, complete her quest, and very interestingly enough, that is enough quests to trigger the Ankh tree to have grown. It is a little bit bigger now. like noticeably bigger honestly and every time the Ong tree grows more quests appear in the world so we're gonna do a really fast one here we used to do a quest for Noble at this point where he broke his cane and he wanted glue but that quest takes you have to go to Zumi Village and then Zumi Lake and then back to Zumi Village to fast travel back to Pupsville you have to avoid a crocodile. It's a whole ordeal. Bill wants a crab. He can't find crabs anywhere. Um, here it is. 
So crab delivered to Bill. That quest saves like two minutes over doing the glue quest for a uh, noble. And now we're going to go back to Tau. Not Tau. Road. <laughs> Getting my Sniff Masters mixed up. Master Road is... Now that we've done enough quests for him, that was that final one was the trigger to convince Master Road that we are sufficient in our duties and are able and are good enough to go meet with Tao, who is the one that trained him originally. So we're going to walk in here. He's going to say, hey, you've done a pretty good job. We're going to say thanks. Thanks, Road. He's leveling us up. Extra heart. And level up again. You may notice that when we level up, the hearts we get are pre-damaged. He doesn't give us full HP. Road is a tough teacher. <laughs> you know? That's some tough love right there if I've ever seen it. Like, I, I don't know why, but it's also convenient because it means we're not healed for when we want to death warp again. Mm. So, it actually works out. Um, Road says that we need to go get effectively a diploma. He buried our diploma in the desert, by the way. <laughs> Road. <laughs> we need to find it. <laughs> um. So this is the Sphinx. It's talking to us. Um. <laughs> it says that a snake stole the key to some sort of temple, and we need to go get the key from the snake. Uh. The snake is right here run up behind it. It doesn't notice us at all. It... I feel like... The way snakes kind of feel sensation is through vibrations. Maybe the sand like dampens the vibrations enough. I don't know. I feel like that's not true. Probably. <laughs> give it, yeah, give it a little bit of credit there. <laughs> uh, so, our diploma is buried in that glowing light that just spawned. Thank you, Mr. Sphinx. Uh, and that glowing light is back next to the snake that we just barked at. I don't know why they put them next to each other. Maybe they could have like hidden this differently, but snake is still knocked out, by the way. He kind of wakes up now. Uh, the snakes in this area, actually, if they attack you, you get poisoned. And that poison doesn't go away without an antidote. You will just die. Uh, because we haven't bought any antidotes. So, the poison, if we get hit by those snakes, we actually would die, and there's nothing we can do about it. So we go back to Road and say, I found the diploma that you buried in the desert. And his... All he says is, congratulations. You can go meet Master Tao now. He lives in the mountains. So. There is a path from Green Meadows back in Pupsville that goes off to the mountains, conveniently. We've actually been pretty close to it before. Uh, the Brave Fruit for Francis is very close to a bridge that takes us over to the mountain range where Master Tao lives. So we're going to just head on over there and meet a new friend that we will talk to exactly one other time. And I think a lot of people actually really like this dog. Uh, he's There's a emote for him in the Discord as well as Boris. Just because, I mean, look at him. This is Henry. <laughs> oh... Uh, Henry has a little scarf and a Santa hat. 
Why does he have a Santa hat? I don't know. But that's his character design. Uh, the bridge is out, him. by the way. <laughs> love him. I love Henry. Um, luckily, we met Goliath earlier, and Goliath, the master axe wielder and builder that he is, should be able to fix the bridge. So, over over here at Goliath's house, we're gonna have a little chat. And head on back over. Although, oddly enough, Goliath, the master builder, he's out of nails. He has the wood to fix the bridge, but he doesn't have nails. Man. So, who in Pupsville would have nails? Well, there's a furniture store. I'm sure that the nails that. used in the furniture that Mary Teresa makes are sufficient for fixing a bridge. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Ah, oh, nice. Keeping <laughs> us on suspense. I was like, oh, is there going to be a twist here? Well... Maybe. Mm. You see, she gives us one nail. And that's it. <laughs> Luckily, that's all you need. One nail. <laughs> just one very well-placed nail. Yep. Just put the wooden place. One nail. Good enough. Easy. Um, there is actually unavoidable damage coming up. Uh... There's a boar on the other side of this bridge. I've tried. I've tried very hard to avoid this boar. You can't do it. You can't do it and have it be fast. This is just damage you will take. At the end of the day, it's not terrible, but it is kind of a shame. Just as far as placement goes. See why in a second. Just around this corner up here. Oh man, look at this boar. Oh, I guess I just get hit. <laughs> mm. Yeah, not much you can do there. Just uh, take the damage. Be happy that you're at two hearts and not less. Actually, no, two hearts is pretty good. I think two hearts is how much the crocodiles do in the cave that we're going to be going to. So, I got a banana. This elephant really likes bananas. He's going to wander on over and create a bridge for us. And right over here... Um, I'm a little short on sense, so I would like to pick something up, but... Oh, there we go. That little grasshopper should be good enough. Uh, bugs are not the fastest sense you can pick up, but they're usually not too bad depending on, depending on which ones you go with. If you pick up something like a ladybug or a cricket, they have very large bars. But if you pick something like a beetle, the little orange bar that's moving back and forth is incredibly small. So timing that can be really difficult. Uh, so this is a cork board. You can probably guess who we're going to give that to later. Might be the furniture store. Uh, these items are optional, but they are very convenient. The saffron flower that I just picked up always spawns, and the orchid that I picked up after is RNG, but it's very common to spawn there. We just had to take the giraffe to get back up, which is a little slow. And over here, with the other giraffe, is a lapis. Another key item that we will never turn into the person that wants it. Wah, wah. Unfortunate, but it counts towards our sense. <laughs> and now, the gorilla always falls asleep when you run by, so you never have to worry about him. 
It just kind of works out that way with timing. Even if you skip those two cents, you will fall asleep when you are running up the ledge. We're going to push this boulder down the cliff to knock the other boulder out of the way. Uh, it was blocking that bridge. We don't need to go there yet, but we will soon. And this is Master Tau. This is Tau's mountaintop temple. Tau is the best Sniff Master on the island currently, until, of course, we become a Sniff Master. But he is going to be our final trainer. Tau is so good at sniffing. He lost his sense of smell years ago, and he is still the best sniffer on the island. Um, don't question it. <laughs> I won't. I have no <laughs> no further questions. Yeah, he. We don't know how he lost his sense of smell. I don't think there's even a quest that really goes into it, but we just know that he cannot smell things, but he is still the best at smelling things. And this grape will can only spawn in two locations on this entire map. And the way that scent spawns work is it is always guaranteed to spawn in at least one of the locations that it can spawn in. And the two locations for that grape to spawn are under either of Tao's windows. So it's just a free scent to pick up, and we will get it every time. Just a matter of doing a quick check on the left to see if it spawns on the left or the right. And we check the left so that we don't accidentally talk to Boris before picking it up. And this is one of Tao's old students. Uh, she gave us a key to a place called Chiro Caves. She's from a town called Chiro Village. And we're going to be heading there right now, actually. We knocked a boulder out of the way to be able to go back there. Interesting. That has never happened before. At least not to me. Uh, this is a, mm. a known bug that we actually don't know how to reproduce. I think this fixes it. Otherwise, I'll have to run back to Gola. I have to run back to Gola. Okay. So, this is so rare. There is one known case of this literally ever happening to someone. Uh, the menu to go to Gola is not appearing in Boris's menu. So, it shouldn't be an issue because it the next story progress update should fix it for him, but it's really... I wish I could actually test this right now and figure out what's going on. Oh well. <laughs> we, yeah, of course it's going to happen on the GDQ stage, right? You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all get to see it. We all get to bear witness. <laughs> we have proof that this bug can exist. I will let Kira know. She, Kira is the runner that found this originally and no one has been able to reproduce it. Uh, it's from an old PB attempt of hers from two, three years ago or something. Luckily, it doesn't take too long to run back over here. And I grab this ladybug. So, it's kind of funny that it happened. Not gonna lie, but at the same time, that's so weird. Hey, y'all can tear through the VOD and see if you can ever reproduce it again for whatever reason. Exactly. It's not one of those good bugs anyway, but... Yeah, it's strictly a bug that would lose time, but it's... I'd love to know why it happens. Because maybe it would hint at, like, something else, right? Mm -hmm. So we're yeah, gonna grab sequence break or something. Yeah, we're gonna grab that fig here. Um, I'm at 18 of my RNG sense. 
Uh, this butterfly is also very consistent, so I don't count it as RNG. But 18 out of the 25 RNG cents is pretty good. Because uh, we will be grabbing a few in this cave. The snakes in here can poison you also, just like the ones in the desert. But there's only three, and they're not really a threat. Uh, so what we needed to do was come in here and pick up this blue flower. Blue rose, actually. Because this is what the... I can't think of her name. The dog that lives in Noble's house. Effectively, Noble's maid. This is what she wanted, was this blue rose. And she had the only key that would open this cave. Which I'm not sure why. She is the only one that has the key. That opens the pathway to go to the northern half of the island, but... It's just how it is. All right, Boris. Back to Pupsville. We're going to give her the flower, and then we're going to take Boris back to Shiro Caves to continue off to the second part of the game, or the, kind of like the, the top northern half of the island. And I'm going to hope that it works. Because running back there would be a bit of an issue. So. We're going to... We have one and a half hearts, which is a little scary because of the enemies I'm going to have to run by. Okay. Over to Chiro. If I can't teleport to Gola at any point in the run, it's not a huge deal because I can just come here and it's close enough. We actually weren't, there's a point where we fast travel from Chiro to Gola and we weren't sure if it was faster to fast travel or just walk. So I'm going to run through the caves here, past the snakes. In the second part here, there's an enemy that. Some people, I know that some kids actually got scared of this enemy because they're so aggressive and they're bats. So they are yeah. attracted to your very loud stomping through the cave <laughs> and they will just ruthlessly attack you. I could see being a kid and getting scared of that. They just come out of like that first bat didn't even see it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. So here's Henry again. Thank you, uh, Henry. Henry says that there are four statues that need to be placed in these pedestals to open the door. And they're in the room with the bats. So what we're going to do, we're going to jump behind this gator. We're going to bark at him, steal his cough drops, dig up underneath him, grab this flower, and die. To clear our inventory. And also get a full heal. Because these bats are ruthless. One statue. Two statues. Their attack animation outlasts your uh, iframes. Yeah, I was just about to say they they still got away <laughs> with damaging you during like that pickup animation. Yep. Okay, I was a little bit too far. I'm going to actually back up here a little bit and grab this item. <clears throat> uh so we got actually pretty lucky there. They have the bats have two attacks. They have the sort of like basic done attack we saw and they also have a grab the grab is effectively just chasing you in a circle for 15 seconds and then you take damage and the downside to that is not only do they 
do more damage and it takes time, but they move you out of position so that if you were like on top of the statue, you're no longer on top of the statue. But we open the door and off we go into sort of the opposite of the desert. The desert was the hot area and these are the chili fields. Uh, similar mechanic, if you stay here too long, you will freeze to death. But there's penguins, so it's not that big of a deal, right? Look at the penguins. <laughs> it's a good trade-off, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna steal that bear's pocket watch and go over here and sniff the stump. The stump smells like a very smelly potato, and that is a scent, actually. We don't need to pick up the potato itself, but we find out what the stump smells like, and that counts. I have questions, but let's just move on, I guess. <laughs> uh, so this is a wall of ice blocking the path to the village. In order to get by it, we need firewood. Where do we get firewood? Well, this bear has a house and we go inside and steal his firewood. <laughs> Literally in front of him. Mm. And now we build a fire and melt this wall of ice to go into the village. And this is where we get to do... You remember the Victory Gang? We get to do another mini game. This is one of the three very in-depth mini games. This is a sledding game. Yeah. And this is entirely motion controlled. On PS2, you press one button. On Wii, I'm going to be repositioning my entire right arm so that I can do this mini game effectively. <laughs> okay. So, I like to rest my arm on like the back of my chair because the way that this game detects the motion here is entirely based on the cursor coming onto the screen. I went early. But you're supposed to just get in the red every time, ideally. Uh, assuming that it works. <laughs> yeah. This mini game is probably the hardest, I feel like, to get a good feeling for or to get into the rhythm of. Oh, it was early. If you're able to time it perfectly every single time, I think the IGT says 26 seconds. So I usually get 30s in PB attempts. 35 is fine. I missed a couple swings. Uh, but it's not that big of a deal. The only real time loss there is if you actually fail the minigame. Otherwise, it's within a margin of error that I think is reasonably acceptable. It's also funny that there was a, a, a three-place podium when there's only two of you competing. Yes. Um... Brain. Pupsville. Yes. Uh, this is where we do some deliveries. I had to scroll through some notes because I actually just forgot, but it's fine. Uh, we picked up cork earlier. And we're just going to drop that off and then do some riddles for Alex, actually. So we had two riddles earlier with a candle and one little question he had. And he has two more questions for us. It's actually, there's a weird mechanic here where if you're standing in front of a dog after a conversation, sometimes the eight, you won't be able to interact with them right away until they move. So like, I'm like, 
start stepping forward to try and like nudge him. And yay, we got the question right. Uh, his question riddles are the second option, and then the third option, and then the first option. I know the answer to the final question is backpack. Which, when you're looking at the, uh, the kanji, it's definitely a much longer word than any of the other options. Because I think it is just a more of a phonetic spelling of how you might say backpack in Japanese. Like a, a borrowed term, a borrowed word, ra word rather. Mm -hmm. So that gold watch we stole from a polar, polar bear, we're going to give it to Noble. And that's a quest completion. Uh, this is actually a, I hate to say recent because it's not recent anymore, but a formerly recent route change. Uh, we used to do a different quest, and I'll point out that quest when we get there. But now it's time to take Jeremy on a journey. As I said earlier, Jeremy needs to get his magical staff imbued with the mana from different locations. He wants... So we need to take him to the ocean, a river, a lake, and snow. And luckily we've been to all those places and we're gonna just go find the scent of mana in all of those places. So luckily the ocean and the river are just right over here. We've been here a few times. Not many other places they could be. Uh, ocean, as you can see. River is just like over there to the side. We dive into the water. Jeremy says, this is where I need to be. Mission complete. Three more locations. <laughs> um, I don't... No, there's nothing there. I don't remember if I picked up the scent there, but there is usually a flower that spawns at that house. The river here is the second location. And then lake and snow will be the last ones. It's faster to just run to the lake, and then we will take Boris from Zumi Village to go to the chili fields. Also, I know people on commentary probably can't hear, but chat definitely is probably jamming to the music throughout this entire run. The, oh, yeah. <laughs> the soundtrack doesn't get old, in my opinion. Like, you'd think doing, you know, multiple dozens of runs that eventually the soundtrack gets old, but no. I would still listen to this. Bangers only. Yeah. Like, the grass theme, even though it, like, repeats the first, like, bits every time it reloads, those first bits are so good. I think during uh, Tech Check was the first time I had ever heard the later parts of the song in, a in like, in-game. Now we're going to take Boris and go over to the Chili Fields for the final piece of Jeremy's quest line. Uh, you see Henry here? We used to do a quest for him. We don't anymore. 
Uh, Henry lost his bag of art supplies. Uh, the penguins spawned in front of me. Cool. Uh, but Henry lost his bag of art supplies on the ice. And it's a trail scent, which means it's pixel perfect. And it's on the ice. We're just not going to do that. Unfortunately, Henry will never be able to draw or paint again. Poor Henry. It's a shame, but he shouldn't have lost it on the ice. <laughs> gotta be careful, Henry. You just gotta. Yeah. Like, I'll point it out, like, it's, like, right around here that I'm running on now, and if I stop moving, you see I keep sliding. <laughs> it's, uh, not the best place for a pixel-perfect item to pick up. Hero, down one. So, earlier... Oh, no, Chiro's down two. Oops. <laughs> Whatever. The cough drops we stole earlier from the gator, well, good thing we stole them when we did, because there's a musician here in Shiro Village who has a sore throat. His name is Mid. And he can't sing because his throat is sore. So we're just going to give him some cough drops. I'm going to try one thing and see if it works. I'm very curious. No. Okay. I know what we're going to have to do. Every time we go to Gola, every time we need to go to Gola, we need to go to Tiro instead. <laughs> That's a very weird bug, but it's workable. All right. Just got to keep that in mind. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So we did a bunch of stuff, and we're just kind of confirming with Tao that, hey, we did all these things. Hey, what's the next part of our journey? Like, well, you need to go to the chili fields and find the book of the Sniff Master. Also, not where I want to go. The book of the Sniff Master is split into two parts. The first book is in the east chili fields. Yeah, east. Uh, we've been in the west chili fields this entire time. The east chili fields over here is a little bit different. Uh, there's a big bunch of ice blocks in the middle of uh, this sort of frozen lake. What you're supposed to do is bark at this penguin and he'll start running across the ice showing you which tiles you can touch and not fall in. We're not going to bark at the penguin because that's mean. We're just going to use our sixth sense two, three, four, five and just run across. <laughs> uh, I like the, that better. The penguin has a couple paths that he can take. So if you're following the penguin, you could end up taking a slower path anyway. But luckily we have a map. <laughs> uh, if I was low health, I would death warp here, but it's not worth it. So the faster strat is actually to jump in the freezing water. And it respawns you across the lake. Uh, freezing water, it turns out, doesn't actually hurt you either. Not that big of a deal. So now we're gonna go... Oh, it's there. Never mind. We can just go to Gola. <laughs> I don't know why it got fixed. What? <laughs> what is this game doing to us right now? Uh, it might be that the second time I used Bora from Gola, it set a flag that fixed the uh, issue. Hmm. That's my theory. Okay. So, 
this next segment, uh, Tao tells us that he wants us to go home and rest. We're not going to do that because he's not telling us what we actually need to do. He's saying what we should do. Like, hey, you've been running around for a while. Go home and rest. All we really need to do is check the Ankh tree. As you see, it's actually pretty big now. This isn't full size, but it's getting there. So now that we have triggered the Ankh tree scene, we can go back to, to uh, Gola Highlands and talk to Tao again. And it's time to do the last two quests for the Victory Gang, which means two more mini games. Mini games, mini games. This second one is my favorite mini game. Um, it may not be obvious, like because we only do one in the run, but all of these mini games have different variations that you can do. Like after you've done them once, you can talk to the dog again and say, "Hey, I want to do like a different course or something." So like the letting mini game that we did earlier has, I think, three different versions that you can do. Each one harder than the previous. And this mini game has five different versions you can do. Uh, on the leaderboards, we actually have ILs for these mini games too. And this mini game in particular is very like hotly contested, in, like occasionally, when people decide to do ILs. Mm, it's some, it's very optimized. Some competitive leaderboard gameplay. All right. So this one, it's just a race. You're just moving from point A to point B, C, D, and then E. Now, the reason I say that is because you're not actually... You don't actually need to follow the course. The Will here... He's going to follow the road. You know, he's an honest competitor. Mm-hmm. Um, but he probably should have made the objective not to just touch all the flags. If he wanted a fair fight. <laughs> just saying. That poor pup had no idea what it was getting itself into. <laughs> You can see on the minimap in the bottom right that he is uh, very far behind. <clears throat> but uh, this minigame has four other courses that you can do. And some of them are really in-depth. Uh, I... Okay. <laughs> I, you phased right through the pole of the, <laughs> yeah. the banner there. Yeah, I know that can ha it can happen. Uh, it's just a interesting when it does, to say the least. Uh, so, the two hardest courses involve a lot of like climbing and routing optimal paths to climb, because climbing is slow, so you want to like take the, take the path with the least climbing possible, but maybe like climbing the biggest jumps or etc, etc. And one of them also has ice segments where you can kind of like drift along the ice in a particular way because of some weird gravity fields they have over like cracks in the ice. It's honestly hmm. kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, so this is Sayir. He is for lack of a better word, a wizard. Um, but he lost his magic staff. <clears throat> so, his magic staff is over here in this cave. Uh, I don't know if it's so important. I don't know why he didn't grab it himself. But this staff is uh, what's controlling the sandstorm. So, kind of important. It's a shame that he lost it. <clears throat> Not as... I don't know. Controlling the Sandstorm is a lot... I feel like lower tier than Jeremy controlling it. 
the weather itself, but still pretty important, at least for this village. So we would just run across the desert, but there's actually a couple quests we can pick up to sort of optimize our pathing. And one of those quests is Peter. Uh, Peter, who we picked up a romantic drop for earlier, which was kind of like a little leaf with a dew drop on it. He wants another flower that he can give to Amalia. Uh, also, we're going to do a quest for Wilbur, but Wilbur's item spawns without having to talk to him first. So we will avoid talking to Wilbur the first time and only talk to him once we've actually picked up the item he wants. Not sure why Peter's item doesn't spawn earlier, but it just so happens to be that way. See, I'm at 20 cents. I'm going to want to pick up a couple extras on my, on my way through uh, this next area. I will see you in a bit, Wilbur. Wilbur's a kind of... Wilbur's a pretty nice dog. He, uh, he wants to build a, an air balloon to kind of like present at the festival. And in order to do that, he needs fuel to like make it fly. So we're going to get a jar of brewed oil for him. Straight from the ground. The jar and everything straight from yep. the ground. Yep. Uh, <laughs> no notes. It's perfect. Uh, so was so that an Arabok you just passed? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, these That's cobras are, uh, they don't actually, these ones don't poison you. These cobras will paralyze you. Oh, just like if Arbok used glare. Yep. <laughs> I actually didn't think of that. <laughs> uh, so the crude oil is in this second grass patch here. And we use our iframes to not die to the vulture. <laughs> Uh, that vulture is really an issue for people that maybe don't have the exact spot written down. I need some sense. Yeah, I think it's over here. Yeah. So, unfortunately, I am down a little bit on sense. So I do want to pick up a couple here. That's still papaya. The buffaloes are enemies you don't really see. Same with the vultures. <laughs> uh, I guess this is fine. There's okay. Yeah, I have a I have a backup I can pick up. So this is the shop that we have not interacted with at all, but it's in every town. And every item there is a scent. <laughs> so we just buy one of everything. Uh, Perfect. The first, the first item we actually got once from Yilu at the beginning, so we don't need to buy that one, but we buy all of the rest. And this is McCoy, the final member of the Victory Gang. And... He wants to play soccer. This is a 1v1 first to three goals. Uh, this minigame is actually pretty RNG because of his AI. Uh, it can kind of just not do what you want it to. Also, you're just pushing a big ball. And he's helping. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Octane. <laughs> Athletic sport competition. Yes. Let's go, McCoy. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 all right. Just let it go. Yeah. Right. You know what? Let's go. You score on yourself. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's helping. Uh, sometimes he does tackle you and knock you away from the ball. But sometimes he's just kind of a chill dude. <laughs> Did not stand a chance. <laughs> Honestly, that might have been the best I've ever seen him behave. 
<laughs> Everyone in chat's shouting Rocket League now. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather play this. Yeah, what what Rocket League wishes it was, honestly. True. <laughs> Why isn't this a competitive esport? Dog Kit League. Is that anything? <laughs> So the two items we picked up, the oil for Wilbur, in English it's actually called burning water, but it's a jar of black liquid. Oh, That burns well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you find it in the desert. Pretty <laughs> conveniently. <clears throat> so we just turn it into him. Uh, Wilbur is like the, I don't know what he is. He keeps, he just like takes care of this cow. That's all he does. And make a blimp apparently. Or a hot air balloon rather. Very different. And then the second item that we picked up was the flower for Peter. I'm just going to drop that off real quick. And then we're going to get another quest. So what we need to do now is we need to go talk to the fashion designer. This is the store where you would go to make clothing if you ever interacted with that system. Unfortunately, we just come in here for the quest. And also, unfortunately, the quest item that we need to pick up is in the desert. And this is the trigger to make it spawn. It's a shame that we Not couldn't... distance. It's a shame that we couldn't pick it up earlier, honestly. But once I am done with this desert trip, uh, we're getting close to a good time for a second break before the final sprint. So I will... Just a short heads up. Give a countdown when we get there. Sounds great. So the beautiful feather that Malshige wants is over here next to this cactus. And I need to pick up a couple cents. Twenty-two. This is a the cent I'm going to pick up here as a backup. Uh, we don't normally pick it up because it is in a very awkward location next to this snake. Trying to not aggro him. It is special flower. It's always there, but it's off to the right of the map where we are usually on the left side. Also, being next to that snake is kind of dangerous. So we try and avoid it unless we really need it. So I'm at 23 out of 25 cents. The last two cents I will pick up from guaranteed spawn locations in a cave right before the ending. Right before we need them, basically. Perfect. So delivering the feather here. And then I'm going to run over to the Victory Gang hideout. And before I go in, I think it's a pretty good chance for a break. So I'll run right, on over here and stop the timer in three, two, one. All right. Excellent. All right. So now is as good a time as any to get a little break on. Go ahead and, you know, stretch out and 
If anyone else has any other dogs they need to feed, go ahead. Uh, you know, get, or if not, just give them a little pat. Give them a little pat for a few minutes while we take a nice little wellness break here. And we will be back in just a few minutes with the conclusion of The Dog Island. So stay tuned and we'll be back in a few.
All right, and welcome back to Awfully Silly. I'm going to shout a little bit because we have a very special guest joining us for a little bit of color commentary. This is Java. Say hello, Java. Okay, that counts. And uh, Java, what do you think? What do you think of this this Dog Island run so far? Are you enjoying it? All right. Yeah, I think that means yes. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't talk a lot. He's a. Uh, he's mostly a sniffer and a snorer. But uh. Yeah, I think he's particularly enjoying the run, and I've been given good word that the rest of this run is going to be a, a definitely a change of pace, so I'm definitely excited to get back into it. Just as a reminder, we do have a highlights channel. Games Done Quick Highlights is a channel that features highlights of our GDQ shows, and you can use exclamation point highlights command to learn more about those highlights. And while we do not have another show this evening... You can tune in tomorrow starting at about 7 p.m. Eastern for Random Number Generation, which is a show that features randomizers and randomizer adjacent content, followed by Aimbot, a show that features FPS and other cool uh, shooter type speedruns. So, Jabba, I think I'm going to set you down. All right. Thanks for joining us for some special commentary. And we're going to throw it right back to Phantom 5800 to finish out this epic quest that is the Dog Island. Awesome. So, I'm just going to jump into this house here. Uh, we can just restart the timer. This is uh, the Victory Gang. We are now the leader of the Victory Gang. Uh, if that wasn't obvious from doing these six different quests and mini games that they wanted us to do, they have now accepted us as their leader, and we will never speak to them again. So... <clears throat> now is as good a time as any to not go back to Tau. We're going to go to Rune Village, where we just were for our little soccer minigame. And this is Tancredi. He lost his hat. Not the one he's wearing, a different hat. Uh, it was stolen by a snake in the cave. So we really need to grab that for him. And while we do that, we're going to pick up two scents in this cave. This cave has exactly three different scents that can spawn. They can only spawn in one place each, which means they will always be in those locations. So I'm going to bait this snake over and then sort of like sneak up behind him. Oh. Walked a little bit too fast. Fine. Gonna let him do his thing. Park from here. Okay. I'll get him from the other side. I need to go behind him anyway. There you Over go. Over here is a another tent. This one I rarely have to pick up. Uh, the lemon. So it's the lemon and the star fruit. I really... Okay, he paralyzed me. <laughs> Classic Arbok, I was telling you. You yep. gotta bring those paralyzed heals. This one's, uh... No, shiny Arbok isn't black. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm not sure. I'll look. I have to, I have to get evidence <laughs> now. Yeah, so you can bark from that grass that the star fruit's in. I was just moving a little bit too fast. So he noticed it's me. It's golden. Like a Ooh. goldish color. I don't... No, the closest we get is red cobras. Unfortunately. So that was all the scents that I need. By the way, we are done picking up scents, except for one more required story scent. That will be our 100th. Other than stuff that comes after the scent check. So thankfully, Boris is able to take us to Golo Islands, because... We're going to be... This part is from Rune Village, go to Gola Highlands, talk to Tau, go back to Rune Village, get an item, go back to Gola Highlands, go to Pupsville, go back to Gola Highlands. So if we had to go to Chiro, that would be definitely a few extra seconds there. So we're just telling Tao, hey, we did all this stuff. 
And he says, all right, let me tell you where the second book of the Sniff Master is. You can go get that. And it's in Rune Village. Somehow he managed to bury it in the time that we fast traveled here to ask him about it. Because it wasn't there 30 seconds ago. <laughs> it is in this bush. We go back to Tao, and he's going to say, All right, so you may have done everything that I've asked, but have you checked the Onk tree lately? Oh, have we? <laughs> uh, because this is the trigger for the final growth in the Onk tree. The Onk tree will be at maximum size. I'm at two and a half hearts. That's actually... Okay. I might want to try and take a hit, but we'll see. I want to... I want to show off a fancy death warp near the very end, and I need to be at a very particular health value for that to work. I will try and make it work, though. So, the Onk tree here is large, very big tree, maximum friendship achieved. And now that we have confirmed we are friends with everyone, we go back to Tao. And he's going to say, okay, okay, okay. You did everything I've asked so far. You've also become friends with a lot of, with like, everyone. But have you sniffed enough things? So he's going to say, you need to have sniffed 100 things. And then he's going to keep talking and say, oh, you already did. Wow, okay. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, here's a key to an ancient ruin. Uh, you should go check it out. It might have something. So we're going to go back to Rune Village. And we're going to go fishing one more time. Yeah. This, <laughs> this last fishing trip has a 33-ish percent chance of getting what we want first try. And if you're an Animal Crossing fan, you might recognize the sprite, because it's very similar to a colacanth. Uh, except it is called an ancient fish in Dog Island. And we don't have to get it while it's raining, and it's not in the ocean. It's in a pond in the desert. There are three different fish here. And the ancient fish is the is a very large fish icon. This is not it. I'm going to fail quickly. <laughs> the other two fish are much smaller, so I can tell when it's not the ancient fish. Uh, my PB gets this second try. So it's not unheard of to be stuck here for a while. I've actually had runs die here, and that is a feels bad moment for sure. Oh, so unfortunate so far into the run. Yeah. Also, the time it takes for a fish to bite is also RNG. That took a long time for the wrong fish to bite. <laughs> oh. But when you're dealing with a fishing minigame. <laughs> this is how runs go. This is... That's not the ancient fish. <laughs> Tried not to catch it. <laughs> caught it anyway. Tried, yeah. This is payback for getting the black bass on the third try. There's the ancient fish. You can tell because it's very large. And it takes a lot of effort to actually pull this thing out of the water. And there we go. So this is Kunkka Ruins. 
This is the first dungeon of the game. And I say first <laughs> for a very specific reason. I'm trying uh, there... to think of a, a dog Zelda pun. Give me a second. <laughs> I'll think of something. Uh, there are three dungeons we will be doing. Just FYI. And the reason we grab the ancient fish outside is because we need to put it on a pedestal. Basically at the start of this place. And placing the ancient fish on this pedestal opens a secret door. That takes us deeper. And on this floor, we need to find two statues. Uh, a silver dog statue and a gold dog statue. If I don't take damage by a chance from one of these snakes, I might... I'll probably try and force it. Because I would like to be at one and a half or fewer hearts when going into the final dungeon. And I, you don't typically take damage in the second or first dungeons unless you get bad RNG. So what I did over there was I sniffed at a door and it got me the scent of a button to press to open the door. So I come over here, press the button, door is open. I'm going to run back in there and grab the gold dog statue. The gold statue... I think there is a like a sort of riddle to this, but the gold statue is behind a locked door, the silver statue is behind... is an effectively an invisible room. Uh, you'll see it on the, on the uh, map in the bottom right in a second. But on the left side of this map, there is a gap where there just isn't a room. Let me mash these cutscenes. This cutscene is just sort of telling us that we need to place the statues. Uh, originally, we would skip, we would go the long way around to skip part of this cutscene, but it's not any shorter if you do so. So you see there's a little dark spot on the map where a room should be. And you go around here to this corner. Man, there's all these vines. Well, what if you just walk through the wall? Simple He's, as that. Yeah. It's a very well-hidden room. Also, that snake goes to sleep so quickly. He was chasing us into that wall and then forgot and went to bed. Okay. I want you to attack me, actually. Thank you. One heart is actually perfect. I'll be able to death warp in the final dungeon and save about 15 seconds. <laughs> but it's a, it's a cool kind of death warp. I have to say, uh, chat is really coming through with the Zelda dog puns. Nice. Uh, we got uh, Bark Arena of Time, A Link <laughs> to the Paws, Bark of the Wild. Uh, let's see, I'm scrolling through a bunch. There's a whole, so many. Skyward Sense. Um, and then uh, somebody said Majora's Mutt. I'm going to elaborate on that one and go Mutt to Jora's Mask. How about that? Ooh. So in that dungeon, we found the Sniff Master Medal. And showing that to Tao, he leveled us up two more hearts for free. And we're going to go take that medal and place it in another cave, pretty close to the Kunkka Ruins. In order to go to a field of flowers, untouched by living creatures, 
for millennia until today. And we are going to trample across these ancient, delicate flowers and dig around until we find what we're looking for. <laughs> As a dog would do. Mm-hmm. So, this is the ancient grove that we are entering. It's sort of this, like, serene, ambient landscape. It Well, there's also sheep here, but... <laughs> Ignoring the sheep, no sentient life form. Uh, all fish, well, not all fish, all bugs can spawn here. And all flowers can also spawn here. But of course, you don't get here in time to have that matter in any percent. Uh, there are also a good variety of fish that do spawn here. So we need three flower petals in order to triangulate the position of the actual ancient flower that we're looking for. The legendary flower. And it's dead. No. Well, that's unfortunate. Patassi tells us that uh, he may know someone that can bring this flower back to life. As we talked about in the very, very beginning. Tassie is an Ankh. And Ankhs are basically fairies. So what if we went and met the Great Fairy? <laughs> or, as far as this world is concerned, you may consider them to be a god. But that's what we're going to do. We are going to go to a different dimension where the Ankh live and meet their leader, and she will bring this flower back to life. Sounds simple enough. This is also the last time we're talking to Boris, so say goodbye to Boris. He has served us well, except for the one time where we couldn't go to Gola because he forgot that it existed. Poor Boris. I don't blame <laughs> him personally. It's Don't take it personally, Boris. You're still a good boy. Yeah. Usually, he serves us well for the entire run. Uh, this Someone tree. In <laughs> Someone in chat asked, if they can resurrect a flower, why can't they heal your brother? <laughs> That's a good question. Asking the real questions. Yeah, for sure. Uh, maybe we, just because we don't ask them to do that, maybe because we're, we're only asking them to bring the flower back. <laughs> it's on but, us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't think that far ahead. Uh, anyway, I'm skipping through some cutscenes here. This is the apocalypse. Um, so there is a massive whale flying through the sky and it's carrying a storm with it that's going to just wipe the dog island off the map. Uh, but we're going to go into this other dimension anyway and kind of just ignore that for a little bit. So we need to solve the Ankh Queen's trials. She has a series of puzzles that are sort of blocking the path to get into her room. Okay, <laughs> I guessed right. So these, this path is predetermined. It's always the same, but it's just if you step on the wrong tile, you fall pretty straightforward, similar to the ice puzzle. Uh, this puzzle is we need a red flower in order to place and open the teleporter to go into the next trial. And luckily that bat didn't kill us, because I like having my health not be full. Uh, this, I actually don't know the riddle here. I just know that we have to dig at these corner pieces in a specific order. And conveniently, that order makes the shape of a Z. So we go top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left. And it just uh, opens the next teleporter. 
The Young Queen didn't, uh, never said that her trials were difficult. And the final trial, we're going to be in a locked room. Which you may say, well, how are we going to get out of the locked room? There's got to be a switch somewhere that opens it. And there is. If you turn around and go up to the wall and press the button. Very, very well hidden switch. And this opens the... Effectively, this will open the door to the Aunt Queen's chambers. Where we get to go talk to her. Uh, I do have to avoid this this gator. This gator is the strongest enemy in the game. Uh, he does three hearts of damage if he hits you. As you can see, we're at one. I would like to stay at one and not die here, but die later. There we go. <laughs> uh, he does more damage than the boss that we will be fighting very shortly. And I did say boss. This is the Aunt Queen. She says that for us to, for her to help us, we need to first stop the apocalypse. So that's our new quest. The apocalypse is kind of like also destroying her world. Uh, we're back in Kunkar Ruins, a different area though. <laughs> These puzzles are a bit trickier, but. Mostly, I'm just going to try and... Like this one here, you're supposed to sniff each hallway to find the right button. And the wrong ones poison you. So, I'm just going down the right path, opening the door. And then I want to run up to this snake and have him kill me. Because running all the way back to where we were is a little slow. That's a death warp that was proposed by a runner named uh, Remy a few months ago. It's very rare that we are in a good position to actually abuse it, but if you have the health that lines up, it's very fast. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> the juke. Yeah, yeah that snake. Uh, these snakes are pretty aggressive down here. Uh, this snake in particular is kind of mean. Like, this positioning is a little tight. You kind of have to swerve around him. Uh, so we need to send for the button, and we need to dodge the snake two more times. Because the button is over here. And then we can go... To the final little puzzle here. You may see the river, you may see the dock, and say, oh no. <laughs> mm hmm. Uh, this river has a 100% spawn rate for ancient fish, which is very good because that's what we need. All right. You had me <laughs> nervous. I was like, I thought we were done with this RNG <laughs> nonsense. Yeah. No, th this is a guaranteed fish. It is just a matter of how long it takes to bite the line, which this one was pretty fast. So, this one isn't that bad. Uh, and there is a snake around this door. As you can see, he got me anyway. Sometimes that just happens. That line is very hard to get in a way where he will consistently miss you. You just kind of have to get lucky in most cases. But five hearts is more than enough for this boss fight. Uh, they give you a little save spot and a chest to like store your items so that you don't lose them if you die. Because we are fighting a boss and... Uh, that is the boss. <laughs> oh. 
So we have Still the puzzle a here. Huge dinosaur. The puzzle here is that we have to sniff the and find out which of the four buttons to press each time. Okay. I'm getting pretty lucky with these patterns and that it's cons I know which ones to go to based on my meter, but this one's a little trickier. Good enough. Oh, but that's not all. Phase two. <laughs> Any good a final boss. <laughs> There's a button in the middle of the room. We just kind of juke him real quick and we are able to defeat the ancient creature. And we are now coming up on the final minigame, actually. This is the escape. Which... I mean, minecart levels. Every good game should have a minecart. It is made definitely better by the fact that it's a dog with the ears flapping in the wind. <laughs> uh, this is actually... It's a consistent map, but you wouldn't think of it just by looking at it. Because there are mo there are branching paths in this that you can take. And some of the paths do take longer than others. Uh, it was actually one of my viewers that noticed that these paths were the same just from watching my runs. And I was like, oh, let me actually lab this and find out what's the fastest route. So the one we have is... I'm just going to read this off. Left, left, left. Right, right, left, right, middle, left, left, middle. Is the fastest path out of here. Yep. Make this sure you all wrote that down, by the way. Oh, yeah. There's a quiz later. Mm hmm. This is the last part of the game, basically. It's effectively an auto scroller, which, I mean, I've seen Mario games end on auto scrollers, too. I ran 3D World. Mm-hmm. It does happen. Uh, yep. Uh, it's just auto-scroller. We mash through some text. We have a little bit of movement, and then time will end when we are entering the final cutscene. So I'll give a countdown for that when we get there. Otherwise, this is a uh, not a bad run, honestly. Yeah, it seems good in relation to your PB. It seems really solid. Yep. Yeah, my PB is a 226.06, which had very good RNG all around, and <laughs> anything that's in a 2x range is honestly, like, a very good run. Even 3x's are honestly pretty good. 2x is, like, literally only two runners have those. So we're just mashing through text. Uh, we're going to use the power of friendship to stop the apocalypse. Uh, so all As of our one friends. Does. Yep. All of our friends are wizard friend Wilbur with his hot air balloon. And uh, yeah, they're going to defeat the sky whale, stop the storm, save the dog island. And uh, yeah. As we skip the cutscene where it happens, unfortunately. But now we are about to leave and go home. So, this is the end of our journey. We're about to get on the boat, go back home to our brother and mom. As soon as I say yes on this, it's the first black frame time. <laughs> well done. Yep. That timing change was recent. Uh, the reason we did it is just because Japanese is able to skip the final cutscene, whereas English is not. So it, having the, it end before the final cutscene means that they're much more comparable. Which is very fair. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, really well done. I think uh, I could speak for pretty much the entire chat when uh, we said this was an adorable game that I was 
very happy to find on the on the list here and uh and feature in this run definitely definitely silly definitely quirky weirdly dark at times but um yeah what a wonderful game um did you want to uh, uh shout out anything any plugs anything you want to alert the people to uh i mean the dog out community is honestly pretty cool like we have a discord it's we have a lot of really good resources for how small this game is it's incredible like what is, like what is available to just like if you want to play the game go for it uh i dream almost every day i i'm a variety speedrunner at this point mostly rpgs this is just falls in line with that i don't play it as much it's mostly for events but it's still a really fun thing to just occasionally just do because why not um i mean my twitch is just phantom 5800 it's been below on stream every the entire time so but all there is i will actually skip the credits here and you can see the post credits cutscene while we're closing out the show because uh, ooh, <laughs> does it tease a sequel no uh. but it, it does show something that you probably weren't expecting i mentioned early on someone was missing and there's Papa. dad <laughs> Papa has made it back home. He came home. And he brought someone. Oh? And... I need to see what this are. somebody is. Ah. <laughs> okay. So. Patassi brings dad home at the very end. Beautiful. That that is the just the most beautiful way to wrap it up, for sure. Um, I did want to remind everyone as well. With uh, we do have SGDQ 2022 right around the corner. If you're interested in uh, being a remote volunteer, uh, we have applications open for that from May 23rd to 29th. And if you would like to do that, you can go to GamesDoneQuick.com for more information. Um, if you are looking to attend SGDQ 2022 in person, it is coming up June 26th to July 3rd, and you need to register before May 23rd if you want to attend the live event in Minnesota. So make sure you go on to GamesDoneQuick.com to do that. Uh, lastly, wanted to remind everyone as well, Frame Fatales will be having its next all-woman speedrunning event, Flame Fatales, in late August. Uh, right now, game and volunteer submissions are open from now until May 22nd. And if you're interested, you can type exclamation point FF in the Twitch chat or go on over to gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales for some more information. But other than that, I think we did it. You a wonderful job, Phantom. Thank you for being here. And for everybody else as well, just as a reminder, we do not have another show after this. So it, we are going to be wrapping up for the evening. But come on back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern for random number generation followed by aimbot. And till uh, two weeks from now, if you're interested in seeing some more Awfully Silly, uh, two weeks from now, we'll be back on as part of Team Velocity's weekly schedule, Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. I believe that's actually going to be Memorial Day. So that will be on the 30th. And I'm going to give you a little tease as to what that show is going to be based off of. Um, it, it's going to be featuring some some 16-bit games. I think I'll just leave it at that for now. 16-bit games. So if you want to see some interesting things, come on back in two weeks and we'll see you then. Uh, but for now, I think we just say goodbye. We'll see you next time.